Talking Reds on a Thursday, and we'll come on to the reasons for that uh, in a minute or two. Uh, but first and foremost, it's Neil Atkinson for this one with Craig Hannon uh, to talk about the news that's just broken. Uh, Premier League football is expected to return, Craig, on the 17th of June. Uh, with those games in hand, uh, getting played and get, got out the way. And then a full programme of games from the 20th uh, of June with an eye on finishing the season the first weekend of August, the first and second of August. It's the news that we've been waiting for in one sense. There's still more details to firm up. Things can still go wrong from here. But the very fact that there's a start date is firstly excited and secondly good news for Liverpool. Definitely. As football fans, it's exciting. We've got something to look forward to. Um, you know, the... the the, the idea that this season wouldn't be completed um, or, or would be voided or anything like that, that, you know, it felt like so much of finishing it was up in the air. And now hopefully there's a timeline um, for us to, to look forward to. And also for the, you know, for the teams and the players yeah. uh, and for the manager to be able to sort of put in place plans. I know they're back training already um, in, a, in a, a sort of unique sense. Um, and soon they'll be back training and in, in, in more contact. But it, it, it almost like that they have their timeline now to work towards. So this is the date that the first game is going to go ahead. Now we can sort of prepare for it all. Well, it was interesting that before that broke, there was something on the Athletic about Charlton prepared and the director of football had confirmed he expected Charlton to be playing on the 20th of June. It was a quote attributed to him. But also they mentioned pre-season friendlies almost, that there will be, they'll try and play a friendly behind closed doors. And I think that that's the other thing that seems to have come out of the Premier League captains meeting as well, is that they just want to make sure they're not opening themselves up to injuries. There's a, there was a lot of injuries first weekend in Germany. So it does seem as though, you know, by the time we get round to that, they'll have had it's the 28th of May today. The first game for most is the 20th. So they'll have had four weeks of contact training uh, and getting a pre-season friendly uh, in inverted commas in there as well seems pretty good. Yeah, and they've, they've, they've literally got a blueprint, don't they? Like they've got this league that's happening uh, not too far away that they're able to look at and sort of analyse and see, um, you know, like you, you mentioned the injuries, but like what else is... That, you know, I'm not. I'm not a data person. I'm not someone who, um, you know, knows loads about how they sort of analyze football. But they'll be analyzing it to to, to a point. Um, yeah. And um, like we also know what Jurgen Klopp's preparation is like and what what he's like as a manager and a coach. So, um, you know, it's about getting the absolute maximum out of every single player, but also like preparing every single fine detail. We know that, like for instance, he brings in a a bloody throwing coach, so he'll have been th- he'll be thinking about little edges that he can get. He'll be thinking about next season as well, um, and about how they sort of use the momentum at the end of this season, um, which which feels like a mad thing to say when we need two games to win the first Premier League title in thirty years, doesn't it? But these <laughs> it are just does, mad. Yes. It's a mad scenario where we find ourselves. Uh, ourselves almost looking at this as right finish this season short break and then you're into the next season and and I think that's how it's going to be and I think that's how the players and, and the manager will be looking at it I think there's no 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 doubt about that it's interesting that the the mooted end date is the 2nd of August uh the keen eyed amongst us have already counted the Saturdays and that gives us seven so that suggests there's going to be a couple of midweek games in there the other thing as well to point out is that the FA Cup the say in the FA Cup final they're not listening to me and Kopi on what's next and they're not playing all the FA Cup games at the end supposedly at least so far uh which is the right thing to do that would uh, have been because, amazing uh, I'd be so excited to be the best the best week of your life I'm sure Carragher was talking about that as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, Sky. Jamie listens, you know what he I mean? That's all listen. I can say. I know he listens. <laughs> uh, that's all I can say. But if they're not going to do that, though, what that suggests as well is there'll be a couple of midweeks in there where they're playing the cup games. So it does seem as though the games are going to come thick and fast. The championship are restarting at the same time. We're not... When football returns, we're not going to be short of football. If anything, I think we're going to be somewhat overwhelmed by it. I've seen I've seen um, a couple of schedules um, that people were putting on on Twitter, and I'm not sure how sure it is or where the, the the sources that these have come from. But I mean, there was one where it was a game every two hours on a Saturday, a Sunday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday, um, which looked incredible. Because like I, I've mentioned that on this before, is the German football didn't really grasp me. Like I mean, it's because I've got nothing riding on it. I've never mm. really had any sort of interest in watching it anyway. Um, but the Premier League will. Um, I know that and like I can't think of anything better on a Saturday maybe not at the moment when the weather's like the way it is in the UK we're at 22 degrees but when it isn't uh, and, and we've got football back being able to sit from sort of 12 till 6 or whatever watching football and then go go to bed and go right we've got that tomorrow Craig <laughs> get ready um, it, so it's that exciting in, in 
the very fact that we're going to have football again, we've got football to build up towards, is uh, it'll just lift everyone's mood, won't it? And those of us who love the game, I think it's going to be tremendous to to have it. I think there's it, it's. It is. I think it's important that everyone commits, and it does feel as though the players have, have now been brought with this. There'll always still be one or two who are quite, you know, who aren't quite sure. And I think that that's we're going to have to accept that there might be one or two amongst the Liverpool squad who may well be out with injuries and in inverted commas. We don't know that at this point, but I think that there is a chance that that's the case. The players have got to make their own decisions as they go. We can't, we can't be enforcing that upon them. But it, you know, having a plan to get the games finished is a good thing. Yeah, I've I've read um, I've read what Troy Deeney's had to say like throughout this. And um, I know it'd be an easy thing as a Liverpool fan to sort of get your back up at what he was he was saying because um, it, initially when you see the headlines, then whenever you look into it and you see that it's either a daughter, I think it's a daughter he's got who has respiratory problems or so on, and he was worried about that, rightly so. Um, you know, you, sometimes we forget that these are humans who are humans um, with football as their career and it's their job. And um, the way Troy Deeney will be looking at it is he won't be thinking, well, God, I'm here to entertain um, everyone during a, a, a pandemic. First and foremost, they'll be thinking about his family, won't they? And you got to respect that. Like, you know, my girlfriend's a primary school teacher, and whenever they were starting, whenever um, Boris Johnson was talking about um, bringing them back and bring, bringing reception teachers back, I'm thinking, is it safe? Like, what? Well, suddenly I'm asking questions about this. And Troy Dean will be doing exactly the same thing because this is his job. <laughs> and he won't see himself as an entertainer. He'll see himself as, I'm Troy Dean, I'm a footballer, and this is what I get paid to do. But I'm only going to do it if it's safe for, uh, for me and my family. So um, that's absolutely fair, I think. Uh, next little thing uh, on it all is obviously we've got a very clear job to do. Uh, and the job is uh, to confirm that the league title is in the bag. It sounds as though we don't know yet the detail hasn't come in, but the first game will be away at Goodison Park, uh, albeit an empty Goodison Park, uh, though that could obviously work in Everton's favour. Uh, and there will also be uh, the opportunity uh, to to then have the game against Crystal Palace, uh, which may well be at Anfield. We're still not 100% on that detail as to how that's going to work itself out. But you know, the important thing here is 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 to see the side get the get the victories that they need to see them get get over the line and that's that's going to become all of our focus it's two games away from the thing we've waited 30 years for yeah i've gone on a bit of a journey with this to be honest like throughout the throughout the pandemic through throughout this sort of um like uh isolation period is that you know it's not going to be the same that like worry about the moment that it does happen and whether i'll be upset you know um you know the fact that we won't be able to go out and celebrate in the usual way we won't get the parade all of these things um and and it was funny i was watching istanbul um on monday night or whatever it was that you got i don't know days anymore days aren't a thing neil are they no they're gonna become um, them again but then they're, they're not no not at the moment <laughs> you don't even do talking reds on the on the normal day it's gonna nope. be tomorrow is it? <laughs> um but um, and, and you guys were doing hot mic and I was listening and I was watching Istanbul and I was getting excited and I was reminiscing over like, rem, you know, remembering watching it as a kid with my dad in the living room and like, um, you know, my mum coming in just as Liverpool scored the first goal and me not letting her leave because she was suddenly this good luck charm and like, so just to remind myself about why I fell in love with football in the first place and it wasn't to go to the pub beforehand and, and go to the pub afterwards and, and celebrate a win really um, because I couldn't do it at that age and, and Istanbul was the best night of my life for God knows how long, my teenage years. Um, but it was the best night of my life because I absolutely adored seeing Liverpool lift the trophy, uh, and I adored doing it in my, um, you know, in my living room watching it with my dad. Now, obviously, look, we're not going to be able to. Yeah, a lot of people will just be watching it alone, like me. I, I will be watching it alone in my house. Um, but I still, I still love watching Liverpool lift trophies, and I, and I, and I still that is why I'm in football. I'm not in football for the night out. All of that came later, and all of that is this like brilliant bonus to it all. But um, what what I the reason why I'm a football fan is because of all these things that I've just mentioned. And so like I've sort of come to terms with the fact that we won't get to go out afterwards yet. Uh, we won't get to have the parade yet. Um, you know, we maybe won't probably won't get to see our mates um, immediately after or watch it with our mates uh, yet. Um, but I've come to terms with that, and I just want to see this Liverpool side lift number 19 because I'm fucking sure they'll do number 20 next season, and that's that's what I'm excited about. <laughs> that's the one that you want. Uh, 19's just a pathway for 20 for you, isn't it, Craig? <laughs> it's the gateway. Uh, it's gonna be, it is going to be absolutely tremendous. We're going to have loads and loads uh, of bits and pieces on it uh, on the Anfield wrap uh, coming across the next weeks. Uh, be excited. It's absolutely fine to be excited. The thing that's happened and the number of people who passed away is is horrendous and, and may well prove over the long run to be seen as, as disgraceful. Uh, but that 
has happened and you get to think about and plan for and have other things. We should be excited uh, and we should be looking forward to this thing that we love returning uh, from the 17th of June uh, where Manchester City will play Arsenal from the look of things and then Aston Villa, Sheffield United and then uh, the 19th, 20th and 21st when we get that run of games including the Merseyside derby, the first Merseyside derby to ever be played behind closed doors. Uh, that'll be in and of itself. Uh, we'll have a lot riding on it and we'll go from there and then it is uh, everything resuming. Uh, who are you most looking forward to seeing which of the lads which of the players who do you think is going to be boss in lock it behind closed doors Craig I think there's going to be loads of surprises I think someone's just going to you know um, I think someone mentioned that on one of the shows so I'm not going to steal this but it really made me laugh someone said um, you know when like people used to talk about Flatty Smeetzer being brilliant in training and he used yeah. to like run the show and the one I always remember is people used to say Bishkan was amazing and then we'd only see it in European competition I, I'm excited to see is there like a mad one comes out like Naby Keita just comes back and is and is the best player in the league for the for the for the last you know the the remaining games Minamino comes in and, and he doesn't have the you know adjusting to you know what the the crowds are like or or he doesn't have any of that distresses and worries of that he just comes back and, and, and is brilliant so I think there's going to be some surprises I mean I'm just excited to see we Mo again little Mo, Mo Salah and uh, and Sadio and all of them really I could just start listing them all and the reasons why I've been watching the um the videos and pictures that LFC keep putting up on the social media and um like I just get excited seeing them, seeing their faces. Yeah, they, they look lovely in that kit in the sunshine. Uh, yeah. Fair play to them. Uh, loads of stuff coming uh, over the course of next week. Uh, loads of bits and pieces around Madrid. You'll hopefully have enjoyed everything we did on Istanbul. Uh, loads of stuff looking one year back to Liverpool, winning uh, their sixth European Cup. Uh, we don't tomorrow uh, put anything out because the anniversary of Heysel. There's lots of stuff on the Anfield app website that we've covered before. You can find that, but there'll be nothing on social, nothing on video, nothing audio that goes out tomorrow because of the anniversary. Uh, we always look to respect it as much as we can. So do uh, try to do so yourselves. And also, as I say, uh, there's lots and lots of stuff on the Anfield app going back a long period about Heysel. Uh, and uh, as I say, we'll, more will be back out on Saturday. Uh, we'll be doing a hot mic on Saturday as well. Uh, lots and lots to look forward to, but the Premier League is back. Liverpool are two games away. You never know, you're looking at raffle. The Reds might have it all wrapped up by Checks Watch, end of June. See you later. Mm-hmm.